today we're going to talk about something that uh, that the Lord put in my heart. The title of the message is called Words Matter. Just get it out there. Words matter. You know, did you know, Pastor Jason, that words matter? They do. <laughs> they matter more than we'd like to give them credit for. Words matter more than we think. You know, we're just surrounded by words. Words are everywhere, right? Words, words how we express ourselves. We put them on our shirts. You know, depending on what we say means a lot. When you said yes to getting married, <laughs> it mattered. Hey, when you said no, it mattered too. Our words matter. Our words matter. And, and sometimes we just say them freely, right? We say them freely, but they're not free. <laughs> they cost. I heard somebody say this about words. They might be free right now, but they'll cost you later. The words cost, and they matter. And the Lord wants us to understand that words matter. In fact, the Bible has many things to say about speaking, about our words. And, and sometimes what it says seems a little harsh, but he says it for a reason. The Word of God is, is, is so full of wisdom. And concerning speaking, he has that wisdom there for us too. And what I want to do is open up with a scripture in James 3, 1 through 10, and then I'll... Um, do a brief summary kind of of what we're going to be talking about, then we'll go into prayer. So let's go James chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. I'm going to be reading out of the NLT. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes, for if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord the Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. Words matter. You know, fun fact. Well, it's not really fun. But linguists say that there's an S and on the low end, 31,000 languages that have existed. On the low end, 31,000. And about 6,500 or 7,000 are spoken today. That's a lot. That's a lot. And you know, women speak an average of 20,000 words a day. Yes. <laughs> and all the women said, Amen. And amen, and amen, and amen, and amen, and amen. <laughs> Man, we speak an average of 6,500 words. Man, I, I can't even say 6,000. You don't even use the word thousand in it. And just 6,500 words is what men speak, you know. And all the men said, mm. <laughs> That's crazy. We, we speak so much. We're talking. Even when we're not speaking, words are running through our minds. Words are just everywhere. And you know what? Words are a big deal. Words matter. And you might not think that they matter so much, but when they're spoken to you in a harsh way, then that's when they matter, right? Words matter when it has to do with us. And you know, God instituted language. God instituted words. And words, actually, it's a gift to speak. And we, th we take it for granted. We think because we have a mouth. You know, did you know everything that has a mouth doesn't speak? You know, I mean, my chicken's. Well, they don't really talk, but they make noise. But everything that has a mouth, it just doesn't speak. It's not like, it's like, you know, we think that we're supposed to. It's my right to speak. But God gave us a mouth. This is a gift. That's why he speaks about it so much in James 3. It's kind of harsh, the things that we just read in James 3, right? What the tongue is and evil and, and, and all these things it says. But there's a reason why God gives us these things. He tells us about it because there's, there's power in what we're saying, you know, our tongue. There's just so much there that we just forget about it. 
you know, and, and sometimes we, we forget so much. You know, when our kids are small, we take very, we're very careful on what they say, right, what they repeat. We actually fight. And say that first. Say mom first. Say this or that. Or you take them somewhere and somebody tries to tell them to say something. And you're like, hey, have you ever said this? Stop, telling, stop teaching my kid how to say these things. I had to tell that to my brother-in-laws. Like, yeah, stop trying to teach my kid how to say these things. But it seems when we get older, we forget the importance. We think that, nah, we can say whatever we want now. When we were so careful, when our kids were small, trying to say, okay, don't say that. Or when we go over here, don't say this, you know. Hey, you're giggling because that happens all the time. It's like, Noah, our conversations are private at home. Don't repeat what we say everywhere else. You can't be saying things like that, you know. So God made the tongue, as it says in Exodus. Remember, Moses didn't want to speak. God, I can't speak. Why are you sending me? He, and, he, and the Lord said, isn't it I who made the tongue, the mouth? Isn't it I who allow people and then choose whether somebody can speak, talk, or hear? God made the mouth. He made the tongue. He made speech. Speech is a good thing. You know, and although all words, we can say everything, but all words are really not created equal, right? Words, words differ. Words differ, and, and they matter so, so much. And what we're going to do today, this morning, is we're going to take five things and, and, and we're going to examine five ways in which words matter. Only five, because there's many ways in which words matter. We're going to take only five. And um, actually, we're going to do a little word puzzle. So I'm going to have five points, and the first letter of each point is going to spell out a word. So they're not in order. So it's not hard to get, but, you know, first service is, first service is pretty good. I don't know if you'll get it. They're yelling in the middle of the service. I'm like, we're not even there yet. Just wait. Just, so just wait to the end. So we're going to see that. And more importantly, we're going to see the parallels in, in God's word to our word. So this is what I mean. If God says a thing, then, and if that thing that God said meant something or did something, well, then as human beings made in the image and likeness of God, what we say should mean or can do the same thing. So, you know, if we read in the Bible in Psalms 119 where it says God's words are like, they're sweeter than honey, well, then our words should be sweeter than honey. If we read in Hebrews that it says the word of God is a double-edged sword, a weapon, well, then our words can be used as a weapon too. So we're going to see the parallels in which God speaks in his words to what we do. And that'll give us a greater understanding because I think we forget that God, God speaks. I mean, we have his word here, but we forget that God spoke it, you know. So the Bible says to imitate Christ. So the best way to learn how to speak is to imitate our Father in heaven. What he says, how he says it, or what he doesn't say. So we're going to see those parallels. So let's pray. Father God, Holy Spirit, in First John, it says that you are our teacher. Teach us why words matter. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm excited. All right. The first one is known. Known. Our words are known by God. And it's, it's something that we kind of know. Like, yeah, of course, God knows everything. We say everything, but we forget that God knows everything that we say. And if we were to really think about that statement, we'd be very careful about what we say. God's words are known. You know, God made his word known to us. It's written. And, and this book, you can be found in a library, right? In a bookstore. Did you know that there is a book with your name on it in heaven that has everything that you do? Your works. It is written. It is written in heaven. What you do, what you say. Let me read something to you. Revelations 20, 11. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. The earth and the heavens fled from his presence and there was no place for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne and books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead that were in them, and each person was judged according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Matthew twelve thirty six says, But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it on the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. So we will give account for our words. And I think it's not too hard to understand that God will hold us accountable. Because if we hold each other accountable for our words, 
then of course God will hold us accountable for our words. If we just see each other, that's why it's easier to understand. That's why you just can't go up to somebody and say something without thinking twice. Some of us, right? Sometimes. But when we just speak, we forget that God's always like the person in front of the person that you're speaking to. It's got to pass through God, in other words, first. You're speaking through God. And, and angels are writing it down, you know? They're just... Imagine all the angels... Imagine if women speak that many words. Imagine... They're like carpal tunnel, right? Just like, but the words being written are massive. Massive words. They're just libraries full of words. You know, it's almost impossible nowadays to say anything without being held accountable because of Siri. <laughs> the other day we were talking here and I said something and then Siri's like, I can't help you with that. Has she ever told you that? I'm like, what are you talking about? Nobody's even talking to you. Like everything we say is being recorded. Everything, you know, it's, it's hard. Especially nowadays, you say one thing, you outburst one time, and, and in a matter of minutes, it's sent all over the world to be relived over social media. So we, we can understand accountability now more than ever, that our words are being accounted for. And God knows, the more important thing is that God knows them, that God knows everything that we say, everything that we text. God knows every anonymous message. <laughs> Every anonymous thread, God knows it. He's in every secret conversation. Every secret conversation, God knows. And, and I know that we know this, but I keep saying this. If we realized it every time that we're talking to God, in a sense, or through God, it's being written, then we would just be a little bit more careful about what we say. You know? Um, I want to talk about a way God made his, somebody's words known. <laughs> one time, uh, it's cool, right? All right. One time, uh, Vanessa, <laughs> my sister, she, was, uh, she got home from school, or we both did, and um, I remember my mom had in her hand a letter from like a thug, like a gangster that liked Vanessa. And I'm not talking about a gangster now. I'm talking about 90s gangster, like drive-by gangster, that kind of guy. And... Um, and she had hidden it somewhere, but the Lord had made it known to my mom. Hey, when you have somebody that, that prays in your house, and this is not, I use her because I want to use mine, my example. <laughs> God makes words known. He makes them known for our benefit. You know what I mean? And uh, man, I remember that. It's like, first of all, how did you find it? <laughs> you know, but God makes words known. Our words are known to him. And from time to time, he's going to make it known to other people. Sometimes we have a word for somebody, and we got to make it known. What good is a word without making it known for somebody? It's, it's useless. It does nothing. God's always looking for somebody to make his word known all the time. Words are made to be made known. we got to make them known. Um, I love it that the Bible speaks so much about not speaking. <laughs> the Bible talks about not talking. A lot more than it does about talking. And I want to read some of these things because uh, a lot of times, you know, it's not good to make your words known all the time. <laughs> because not everybody needs to hear what we have to say. Not everybody needs to hear that. Let's, let's make God word, God's word known. <laughs> let's keep our words hidden, at least for a little while. At least think about what we're going to say. But let's see what the Bible has to say about that. Proverbs 17, 27 through 28. A truly wise person uses few words. A person with understanding is even-tempered. Even fools are thought wise when they keep silent. With their mouth shut, they seem intelligent. Proverbs 21, 23 says, Watch your tongue and keep your mouth shut, and you will stay out of trouble. That's my, like my teen life verse right there. I just, ugh, you know. Ecclesiastes 5, 2, Do not be rash with your mouth. Don't let your heart utter anything hastily before God. For God is in heaven, and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. In James 1.19, it says, Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Ooh. Our words matter. Our words are known by God. Our words are known by God. They're being recorded. They are, they are in the heavenly books. And it's just something that we have to really get deep down. And this is going to give us wisdom you know, a lot of times we go through things in life um, just because 
we didn't think our words were going to be taken seriously. <laughs> but they are. They were. And they are being taken seriously. So tell your neighbor that you're, that, tell your neighbor this, God is listening and angels are writing. They just wrote what you said. <laughs> your words are known. Number two, A, acknowledge. Words should acknowledge. Did you know that God acknowledges you and me? That he loves us? That he's not ashamed of us? That he calls us his own? That, that repeat, this, this holy book is full of affirmations and acknowledgments to you and I. And our words should acknowledge God. We are made, that's why when we worship, we're acknowledging. When we sing a song, we're acknowledging. That's what our words should do, is acknowledge God. From the mouth of Christians, Christ's name should come out. Right? Our words acknowledge. You know, you acknowledge who you're proud of. Right? This is my dad. This is my mom. These are my pastors. You know, this is the school I went to. Look, look at my ring. Like, ooh, look, this is my husband. Look at my ring. You know what I mean? Like, we acknowledge who we're proud of. You know, my grandma used to always drag me. Oh, my goodness. Like, people that I've met maybe like once in my life, you know. Come here, mijo. Look, come here. Here's, this, is, this is my sister's cousin's brother from the, and they're like, this is my son. This is my grandson, my oldest, you know. Always trying to acknowledge. And they're trying to honor. That's what they're trying to do. And we acknowledge God. We're professing to everything that has ears and everything in the spirit as well who he is. And that we believe in him. You know, acknowledge means this, to accept or admit the existence or truth of something. To accept or admit the existence of truth in something. That's why it's so important that we acknowledge God. So important. You know, God acknowledges his goodwill towards us in Jeremiah. I have plans for you. They're good. In Ephesians, he says that we are his workmanship. He is acknowledging us. He calls us his sons and daughters in Corinthians. And in Matthew, God acknowledged Jesus. This is my son whom I love and I'm well pleased. Acknowledge, there's power in acknowledgement. So we should acknowledge one another. But more importantly, we should acknowledge God. Because he is, a, he, he's, he is, he is the reason to acknowledge. We should acknowledge with our words more often than we do. You know, Matthew 10, 32, 33 says this, everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my father in heaven. That's powerful. Because we all know that we're going to stand before, before God. And it's going to be too late to acknowledge him there. To confess him there. We do it here. And I get it. I used to be one to be very shy about acknowledging my faith in God. Because the world hates God. Surprise, surprise. The world, the world hates God. So it's difficult to acknowledge something. It's like wearing, it's like wearing a Spurs jersey like, in a Lakers game, in, in L.A., you know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, like, you got to be really proud or want some heat, you know? Right? So that's how we stand out when we acknowledge God. And I get it. It's, it's like that. But the world needs to know. Now more than ever, the world needs to know why. They see you blessed, but they assume that you did it for yourself. And a lot of times we just live that life. Hashtag blessed life. Well, that's cool. How can I get some? You know? We need to give God glory. We need to acknowledge what he's done for us. We need to honor him that way. It's so honoring to God. I mean, man, when my children acknowledge me and honor me, I feel a sense of like pride. Like, hey, yeah, I'm dead. You know? If the father wants to hear acknowledgement from his children too. This is a relational thing. It's not like a religious thing. It's relational. We acknowledge our children. Our children acknowledge us. And we forget sometimes that God is a person. He's a father. Wouldn't you feel hurt if your children didn't acknowledge you? Especially like on Father's Day or Mother's Day or your siblings didn't or your nieces or nephew. Yeah, it kind of hit a little bit. It hits. It, it hurts. Well, 
God hurts too sometimes when we don't acknowledge him. That's why Jesus said it probably, hey, look, you don't acknowledge me here? I love it. I'm not going to acknowledge you there. It seems petty. It's not petty. It's truth. If you don't want to acknowledge him here, then you don't love him. Then it has to do with lordship, right? You're not willing to say he's your Lord? Confess him? Okay. Everybody wants all the blessing, but nobody wants the heat for acknowledging God. But it's time that we acknowledge God a little bit more. Amen? Praise God. <laughs> Psalm 71, it says, I will tell of your goodness all day long. I will speak of your salvation. Psalm 63, I will tell of the Lord's unfailing love. I will praise the Lord for all he has done. We're releasing testimony into the world every time. It's like Brian was saying. Every time we worship, we praise. We're, every time we're using words, we're acknowledging something. And we're admitting and accepting God is who he said he was. And he is. We're acknowledging the world is hearing that. And even though they don't respond, they're saying, okay, I see you. I understand now what you're about. I understand why you're blessed. I don't agree with it, maybe, or I don't understand it completely. But at least I understand. I get you now. You'd acknowledge it. You made it clear. Acknowledgement makes things clear. We make things clear. Lord, you're my Savior. I'm yours. You're my Lord. You're my wife. You are my wife. You know, we're making things clear, acknowledging. And it's always a good time. There's never a bad time to acknowledge God. Never a bad time. Always good to acknowledge God. I, I had them challenge first service. Every time you get in your car this next week, acknowledge God. Something good. I mean, when you see that door, when you see any door, think acknowledge. Just, just do that. Acknowledge God. It does something to the soul, to the spirit. You know, Pastor Joe... He is one of the happiest people that I know. You know, he's like always, you can just hear him walking. Like you can hear him far in the distance. And like, hey, Pastor Joe's here, right? Coming from his mouth is acknowledgments all the time of God. Praises of God. And, and he goes through some stuff too. He's not superhuman. He, he goes through some things, but acknowledgments are, he's always acknowledging God's goodness. And it's like, man, did Pastor Joe... I just like to be around him because he's gonna, you're going to hear a blessing for sure. An encouragement for sure. Let's strive to do the same thing. Amen? Praise God. The third one, seeds. S. I like this one. Words are seeds. Tell your neighbor, you're a farmer. <laughs> you're a farmer. Every time you speak, I was going to do this, this illustration, but it was kind of messy. D told me not to do it. I was going to have Noah come up here and just, we talk to each other, but spitting out sunflower seeds. <laughs> yeah, it was, but, you know, it's just, Brother Joe's like, no, I'm going to have to clean that up. Sorry. But if we think about that, every time we speak to somebody, seeds are flowing from our mouth. They're flowing, and sometimes they're hitting you in the face. Seeds are sown from our mouth into the soil of the heart. The heart is a soil. And they're falling places that we intend to fall and they're falling on places we didn't intend to fall but regardless seeds grow seeds grow that's what they do a, a seed is a seed because it grows into something and so our words are seeds you know jesus described the word as a seed in the parable in, in luke 8 11 he spoke about the sower and the seeds, and, and the disciples said can you explain to us what do you mean by this and he said plainly in verse 11 this is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. And so, because God's word is a seed, our words are seeds too. They fall on grounds in people's hearts. Every time we speak, it takes root. That's where it's done. It passes through the mind very quickly, just enough for comprehension. But really, it falls on the heart. That's where the seed falls. We should sow good seed wherever we go. We should make it a habit to sow good seed wherever we go. Everything that comes from our mouth, we have to know that it's going to be planted and then something's going to happen with that. And it's got to be good. It, it has to be good. The Bible says that our speech in Colossians 4, 6 should be always with grace, right? Seasoned with salt that, we, that you may know how you ought to answer each other. Just think this. Good seed, good breath. Bad seed, bad breath. Right? You ever realize when you, when you have that breath, you're like, oh. You're, you're like, oh, sorry. You, what do you do? You cover your mouth. Think about that. If I were to say something bad, so bad seed. 
Have you ever did that? I've done that. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. I, we've all had to bite our tongue sometimes, right? You know, the thing about seeds is that <laughs> seeds grow and somebody's going to eat of that fruit. Somebody is going to eat what the seed produces. And, and we will eat of it eventually. You know, we go place here, there, work in this job, do this. You know, reputations are built a lot on what people say. You know, oh, that person's mean. Well, how, how do they know that? Because of what they say, how they are. You know, or this person, ah, this person's cool. He's real nice. He's always, he's always what? He's always like happy. Yeah, because what do you say? Our, our, our words, our reputation as well. Those seeds we plant everywhere. And, and sometimes we eat the fruit of that. What's the fruit of good seed is that people will receive you. The fruit of bad seed is people don't like you and people have heard of you. And, and doors are closed to you with bad seeds. You close, we close doors when we, bad seeds. Every time we say something, a bad seed, we're closing a door later down the line. We're going to have to eat of that. The Bible says in Galatians 6, 7 through 8, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For if he sows to his flesh, will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may be, that may impact, impart grace to the hearers. You know, parents, parents, don't sow negative seed in your children. Speaking to myself, we can't sow words of negativity and, and because we, we do that sometimes and then we wonder why we're, we're eating the fruit of disobedience and dishonor. Because we've sown something. And you know, sometimes other seeds are sown in our children and we still eat the fruit of it. And we're like, huh? You ever told your kids, I didn't teach you that? Where did you learn that? That's was very careful. Who's speaking into our children? Because you're going to eat the fruit. It's easy to just throw seed everywhere and be like, ah. Yeah, but those little plants, your little kids are plants. They'll go and then you're like, ooh, I didn't plant a banana. Like, I didn't plant no okra. I wanted some strawberries. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to give you something. And you're going to wonder, man, where did you get that? It's because words are seeds. And they're hearing it from someone. We shouldn't do that. We should, we should plant good seeds in our children. And you know, one time uh, I had a garden. Well, it was for Dee, but she didn't take to it. She, so I ended up gardening right out there. And um, I was planting some okra, and, and I put it in the row of the okra. And when I came back, like, weeks or like a month and a half later, I noticed that there was an okra growing, like, over here. And I'm like, oh, where did that, where, how, how did that happen? Well, it must have fell. Seeds don't care where they fall. And when we're speaking things around our children and around others, we're not intending them to fall there, but they're hearing it, and they're falling anyway, and they're going to produce something there. It's very careful what we, what we say. Very, very careful. You know, the seeds come through the media, right? Through the radio, through what we hear. They're going to take root. It's what they say. It's, it's the words. A lot of times, I remember Pastor Joel Stocksdale said this one time at a youth thing, and I never forgot it because the way he said it. I can't say it the way he said it, but this is what he said. He was talking about secular music, particularly rap, like gangster rap, right? And um, he was saying how the kids come up to him and be like, but Pastor Joe, I just listen to it because of the beat. I just like the beat, you know? The beat's cool. The church music, the beats are not cool. The beats over here in the radio, they're cool, man. You can dance to them. You can move to them. You can bounce to them, whatever. And then Pastor Joe, <laughs> Pastor Joe said, oh, yeah? He always, he always sends his statements like that, oh, yeah? He said, oh, yeah, well, that beat is lulling you into a demonic coma. I was like, ooh. And, you know, I don't like the kids. Like, they're like, Oosh, went over their head, you know. But because it's the seed that was being planted, not the beat. It's the words that were being planted. He said, one day you're, you're bumping Tupac, and the next day you're doing a drive-by. <laughs> he said that. I was like, man, that's kind of true. Like, I know people like that, or used to, back in the day. I mean, all they listened to was like, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> not, not Vanessa, but just, hey, we're from the South Side. When it was South Side, South Side, now is good. Like, we knew, you know, like, the, the things that people used to listen to, 
were harsh, man. They talk about murder and all kinds of things. And then what happens? They end up murdering. It's not a coincidence. Seeds are planted. And they gave fruit. You know? So um, let's plant good seed. It's a good idea to plant good seed. Tell your neighbor they're a farmer. <laughs> Tell them good seed, good breath. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> All right. Number four. Expose. Ooh. Words expose what's in the heart. Words expose what is in the heart. You know, God is actually exposed, or better yet, revealed his heart to us through his word. That's how we know, through his words. Through his words. In the same way, we expose what's in our heart through our words. It doesn't take long. I love, I love this. I think this is something that God made on purpose. He spiritually connected the heart to the mouth. He spiritually, he did that on purpose because God can see the heart only, right? But he's going to give us insight, some help. He's going to help us and say, just listen to what people say. Just listen. All we have to do is just hear what, what we say. And eventually, it's going to come out. Luke 6.45 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Ooh. Our words so expose us. You know, I, wanna, I would bet that most of the convictions made in court... <laughs> are made by self-incrimination. <laughs> because if you watch these shows, what is it, man? I like to watch like these shows, 48 hours, whatever. There's always a scene where they take the suspect into the room, right? And they're just sitting in there. And, and the cops will ask a couple of questions, but most of the time, they just let them sit there and sulk. They're just waiting for them to say something, you know? That's why you hear ask for the lawyers, hey, don't say nothing when the cop pulls you over. Why? Because in the Miranda rights, what you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. Because the truth eventually comes out. It eventually comes out. God is wired us that way. The heart speaks truth. Billion dollar profession in, in therapy because of that. The heart speaks truth. We're wired that way. And we've seen, and this is the negative side of it, but there's a positive side to it too. And we, we hold it here in our hand. God's revealed word. We should be the same way. Let, let our hearts speak the good things. Let us cultivate, let, let us put goodness in us so that our heart can speak it out. It's a good tell what's in our heart by what we say. I tell these, uh, sometimes some of the young adults will be like, hey, Pastor Rob, I like this girl. I'm like, cool. And, then, <laughs> and they're like, uh, how do I know? Like, she's the one or if like, we're going to mesh well or whatever. I'm like, oh. I was like, well, what do you think about her? Well, she's pretty. Well, obviously, you know, like, okay. Yeah, she's pretty. Okay, check one box, right? <laughs> it's like the big box. Any other boxes to check? Well, I tell them this. Look, your friends, and usually they're friends with friends, right? Amongst friends. So I said, just go low key. Don't tell them you like them yet. Just chill. And just listen to what they say. Just listen to how they interact with other girls. Listen to what they say, like when a prettier girl comes in. Listen, watch them. Just listen, because they're going to say something that's going to reveal their heart. It's going to come out. And you just can't be so focused on what they look like. Oh, wow. And they're speaking like nonsense, you know. Uh, and girls, too. I mean, it saves you a lot of heartache if you just listen to what a guy says. They're like, oh, but he's so cute. Yeah, all he's been talking about is himself the whole time. Or like his car. Or like whatever. The heart is going to reveal or the mouth is going to reveal what's in the heart. It's going to come out that way. And God has gave us, this is a great tool for parents. Oh my goodness. I love talking to my nephews because you just go and you just, you just, hey, what's up? You know, what's going on? How's school? Just a couple of questions. They're like a lot more. You just, one, it just takes one. And then they're going and they're like, oh my God. And if it's a little girl, oh my God. They just go and go, go. And they just go, and it's like, yes, tell me more, tell me more. And they're just telling you everything that's on their heart. They're not trying to hide nothing. They're like, oh, yeah, mom said this to dad. And mom, yeah. And dad slammed the door. You know, like, they're like everything. That's so pure. I mean, what they're saying is like, Ugh. But the purity of that the heart speaks truth. 
That's why it's so important for, for husband and wives to talk to their spouses. It's very hard because sometimes we hear more of how they say it than what is being said because that's just who we are, right? We're, we're visual. You know, 1 Samuel, it says, in 1 Samuel 16, 7, it says, the Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearances, but the Lord looks at the heart. So a lot of times for us men, and maybe some women too, is that we hear how things are being said instead of listening. If we were to listen to what the, what's being said, even if we don't agree with it, and if, even if we don't like it, that's irrelevant. If, it's, if they're saying something, it's from the heart. It's the truth. Then we can work on whatever, but it's not even about that. It's, I want to know truth. Tell me what you're feeling. I don't like that, that you feel that way, but regardless, that is, let's work on it now. Now that we have the truth, we can do something because the heart reveals truth. Nobody would want to speak to somebody and, uh, and question everything that they're saying. Oh, man, that sounds like a lie. You know, like we all assume when we speak to somebody, they're speaking truth. It's an assumption. It's a good assumption. We're all, we all speak to each other, assuming truth. The heart reveals the truth. We should do that. We should, we should allow the heart to reveal the truth without stopping it. And a lot of people don't say it. Speak the truth because people have stopped it in the past. They've been hurt. They've been caught off guard. Like It cost them something when they spoke the truth. But as believers, we're to understand that that is what God wants. Regardless if it is an ugly truth, it's the truth. And where there's truth, there's freedom. When you speak the truth, there will be freedom. Amen. All right. I'm going to stop there. Well, on, on that, on expose. <laughs> but we should do that. We shouldn't focus on what's being said or how things are being said, but what's being said. If God does, if, if it's good enough for God, he doesn't look at outward appearances, it's good enough for me. I'm trying to imitate Christ in every way that I can. Amen. So, tell your neighbor. <laughs> tell your neighbor, speak to me from the heart. Mm. And then tell them, well, listen this time. <laughs> tell them, let me. <laughs> Let's try to strive to keep the word of God in our heart so that it will speak truth. It's going to bear truth in the future. This is the last one, okay? This is the one that I'm really excited about because it's kind of an obvious one, but the last one is power. P, power. Anybody guess what the word is? Speak. Yay. Good job. Words have power. Words have power. The statement is so easy to say, but it just, it's not tangible. It's not tangible. So we don't really grasp the weight of it yet. And actually, when I was preparing, I was, I was going to do something else, but God kept speaking this word. I was like, okay, we've had words. I know words are important. But he, want, he would just tell me they have power, power, power. There's power, there's power. And I'm like, okay, there's power, there's power, there's power. And the more I started reading, I started to understand, okay, hold on. I've been saying a lot of things my whole life. And if words have the same power that God is saying in his word, then, whoa, one, I need to repent <laughs> from some of the things I've said. And two, I need to say things on purpose, with purpose, and not speak idly anymore. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Power is like, the power of words is like oxygen. Oxygen is the most abundant element on earth. But you can't see it, right? Like, you can't see it, right? But it's so crucial. You, you only see it in like a tornado, right? You only feel its power in a hurricane. That's how words are. It's a spiritual thing. We don't see it. That's why we, we say things without regard. We don't understand the power of it. Because it's not tangible. It's not something that we can actually see the impact of. That's why I wanted to use that illustration with the seeds. Because you can kind of see, oh, ooh, don't do that. Well, yeah. <laughs> but we just say things. We, we, we forget how powerful words are. 
And I think that there's really two things that make words powerful. One is the one who's speaking them, right? Authority. Authority behind words is important. And two is your environment or the context in which you said it. Let's look at God. God is the authority. The, capital T, capital H, capital E. He is the authority. His context is everything. His environment is eternity. That's why his words are so powerful. Because they don't stop. His words are eternal. His words are exalted, the Bible says. He has exalted his word. His words go and go and they do and they accomplish. They do not return void or they just drop dead in the air. His words have power. It's like a punch that just doesn't stop. Now our words have the similar effect. We don't understand. We don't see. But because God is spirit, and we are spirit too, it's going to affect us the same way. Our words have power. The Bible says in Proverbs 18.21, the tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. Our words have the power to give life or to take it. Our words have the power to build up or to tear down, completely dismantle. One word, one phrase, one sentence, one, one thing can just last in somebody's life. Just last and last. And it can totally set their life on course or off course. So much power. So much power be behind our words. And what I want to do is I want to show a video now. And it kind of, this is a video from Ikea. And uh, I'm not endorsing or sponsoring Ikea, although their stuff is pretty cool. And if they hear this, send the check to the building fund to uh, Harvest, City, <laughs> Harvest City Church. Come on, 1.5. Come on. But I want, us to, I want us to see this because it's going to make it a little bit more tangible how powerful words are. Blossom makes me happy. You're making a difference in the world. You are beautiful. I brought them here to see the plant. I was like, a plant is getting bullied. Like, it's not normal. I think it's an excellent project. To have something tangible that they can actually physically be a part of is I think going to be very powerful. As the weeks passed, I started noticing that the one that was being bullied uh, started kind of to droop. While the plant that was being complimented, it was, it was flourishing and beautiful. It's raised the profile massively of different forms of bullying and the effects that bullying can have on people. It can definitely affect other people. You know, when I saw this for the first time, I got a little emotional because all I could see was a child, my child, as the withered plant. And I think about all the times that we've, we've talked with people and counseled people. And, I, and even in myself, I saw myself in that plant. And then I saw just 
you know, just the downcast spirit. The downcast spirit. And it hurt me because I have, I'm guilty of speaking things just without thinking to my children, without regard, without realizing the power of my words. And I've dealt with things in my life, in my childhood, and in my adult life from words that had so much power that I, I, I chose to put it out of my mind, even though it was producing a harvest. It was producing something in me. And when I saw that, that plant, I was like, Lord, first I had to say, God, forgive me. Forgive me for using words unwisely. Forgive me. Because what I have said has affected people. It has. No doubt about it. It doesn't matter if I believe the statement or not. And it's so amazing how a secular company doing an experiment, you know, can prove what it says in Proverbs. That, that we have the power of life and death. We need to speak life every chance we get. We need to speak life in our marriage. We need to speak life over our children. We need to speak life over our situations, over our families. We need to speak life in our places of work, in our schools. We need to speak life over our pets. We need to speak life over everything. If God spoke life, we should speak life. We speak life to our bodies. We speak life to our finances. We speak life to whatever God has blessed us with. We cannot speak death. And you might say, well, I don't speak death to somebody. We discourage people. That plant didn't just shrivel up and die. It's dying. Death is a process. And dreams die when people speak against them. Dreams, purposes, and plans die when negative words are spoken. And God wants us to know today that what comes out of our mouth must be life. It must be life. It has to be. There can't be another option. There can't be another option for your children's sake, for your spouse's sake, for your family's sake, for your nephew's sake, for your niece's sake, for your brother and sister in Christ's sake, speak life. Speak life because we are going to be held accountable for what we're saying. Would you like to be the one that makes a plant die? No. But sometimes we are responsible for killing things in people. And God will give us grace over the things that we've done in the past. I had to deal with, I was like, Lord, there's so much weight on this message for myself because I've spoken, I probably remember less than 1%. Think about that, of all the words I've said. Probably 0. 0.000. I only remember what I said like today, maybe, <laughs> and yesterday. But just think about the gravity of that, of everything that I've said. I, I, don't, I can't even put a number on how much I remember. But God remembers. And, and, and importantly, too, our children remember. They remember what's said. One thing that gets said, it's like one bad thing can undo like five good things. That's like how humans work. It's just, and the enemy knows that, and he's going to try to lure us into speaking bad seed. He wants to get us to speak out of emotion. He wants to get us to speak out of hurt. He wants to get us to speak out of pain. Because he knows that we're going to eat that fruit later. And he knows that people are going to eat it too, wherever we spend. But God loves us so much that he speaks life to our situation. He speaks life to your plans. Your future, there's life over them. You have a calling. You have a plan. There's something for you. And God is speaking future to that. He's speaking life. And whatever the enemy has planted or allowed to, to be planted in our... God, because He's Spirit, 
can take his spiritual hand and uproot the things that have been planted in our lives. Only God can do that. Therapy can't really do that. To be honest with you, it might help mask a little bit, but these are spiritual concepts. There's a spiritual seed that's there. And we cry out to the Lord, God, there might some things still germinating that we don't even know. But we're going to stop the bad seeds from germinating right now in the name of Jesus. And we're going to speak life over the good things. We, we pray, Father, water the good seeds. Water the good seeds. Remove from the soil of my heart the bad seeds that have been planted from my heart. We're all to stand up. What we're going to do is something very practical. And it might seem like just another thing. Because that's how we treat words sometimes. It's like we're just saying another thing. But if we remember, we can just remember for just for this instance, at least, the gravity of words, okay? The gravity of words, the power behind words, and everything that it means to say something. I want you to speak life to somebody next to you. Speak life to somebody next to you. You got to see that plant. You got to see them. See that plant. Speak life to them. You know something about seeds is that a seed will always grow upright no matter how you plant it. Seeds sense gravity. Seeds are attracted to light. Plants, what they'll do is if you plant it in the shade of another plant, they'll start growing towards the light. We want, we just need, God has put in us a yearning for good seed. Whenever you speak life over somebody, it's just, they're going to grow. They're going to grow towards it. It's going to just flourish, and you're going to see it in their eyes. You're going to see weights being lifted. You're, you're going to see change in people when you speak life over them. This is a life message. This is something that, that because we can still speak and write, it should be on our hearts all the time. Let today be a day where you just change the course of what comes out of your mouth. Let today be the day where you really think, should I say that joke? Should I be sarcastic today? Should I snap back like I usually do? And let's let the Holy Spirit that the Bible says is a spirit of self-control. Because remember, nobody can tame the tongue, but the Holy Spirit can help us speak the life that we need to speak. So let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you that you have spoken life over us. You, uh, you have just gave us everything that we need, God, in your word. You've affirmed us and acknowledged us, God. We thank you that our, our words are seeds, but they're good seeds. We thank you that our words will, will blossom, Lord God, and produce good fruit, and we'll eat the good fruit, and our children will eat the good fruit. God, I thank you that you will put in the forefront of our minds, Lord, the importance that words matter. And God, that we have power, Lord, to create with words, power to build up or to tear down. Father, I pray that you would mend every heart, Lord God, that has been affected by a bad seed. Right now, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would uproot it right now. And that you would discard it and burn it, Lord God. And that you would replace that seed with the good seed with the word, Lord God, your word in our hearts, Lord, the promises and blessings and affirmations that you've given us in your word. Father, let those seeds grow. Let those seeds be watered. Let those seeds receive the sun and, and, and nutrition that needs. Father, and I speak a blessing, good words over everybody hearing, Lord God. Words that, that you matter. Words that you have a future, and it's a good future words that there's a God in heaven that looks out for you. There's a God in heaven that's loving on you even when you don't know it. You matter. You matter. Your plan for your life matters. God is calling some of you out of the darkness right now. He's calling you into the light where your good seed will grow. 
let me encourage you that what God has put in your heart, he will help you bring it to pass. God has put something in your heart today. And God has put something in your heart your whole life maybe, and you know it. But a bad word has been spoken over it. So you've made the seed dormant. But today, it's going to be resurrected. Today, the, the life-giving water of the word of God is going to just fill it. Fill your soil. And you're going to begin to produce fruit for the kingdom of God. Amen. So as the worship team leads us into a, a last song, let's acknowledge God with a heart. If you want to put the last slide up, brother. Every time we speak, we remember that our words are seeds, that they have power, that our words expose the heart, that we should use our words to acknowledge God, and that our words are known by God. Amen? Praise God.